Hello and welcome back. My name is Delmico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. So, here on the channel this week, uh, as I said, I was going to start branching out some other things. So I'm taking a little bit of a break from the free NAS stuff until I hear back more from the community. So in that time, I'm going to go back to the roots of what I really do, which is... Um, animation, content creation, and all things that are media, and all the, the nice things that are out there right now, <clears throat> all the programs. So for this series, I'm going to look at a program that we have not looked at before on the channel, at least not in depth. The program is Algorithmic's Substance Designer. Now, Algorithm makes three, well, actually four products, but their two main products to market right now are Substance Designer and Substance Painter. They are both programs that are meant for texture creation. So, and they're aimed more towards the gaming market, but I believe that with Substance Painter, Algorithmic's trying to kind of go into both, the, more, both markets, being film and entertainment as well as um, games because they have upped the amount of textures that you can output. Now I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that, Al that um, Substance Designer is kind of locked at, I believe it's 4K. I believe that the, the, the bigger images you can generate out of, or graphs you can generate out of Substance, are only 4K images. I think that's all you can actually generate out of here. Um, I don't know if you can overdrive this. Let's let's just see. Let's see if we can overdrive it. Nope, I was wrong. You can generate looks like as big of a image as you want to out of here, just that it gets really really slow to comp to compute. So you can you know output really large images apparently um, inside of Substance. So what is Substance? Well, Substance is kind of like textures on super crack um, if you've ever seen uh, or if you know what procedural texturing is <clears throat> then you already have an idea of what substance is so substance is a procedural texturing program meaning that you use node based structure very much like hypershade inside of Maya and you can build these shaders that exist in mathematical form. So this shader right now is currently being generated as we speak. So this is not like a pre-made texture. This is something that's being generated from a bunch of random noise and pattern generators with color added in, and then I'm getting my final result. So let's look at this texture. So the texture that I was going for with this, and I'll actually get my reference image. So here's my reference image. I was going for this kind of denim um, type of texture, and I think that it did a pretty fair job of pulling off this denim, this denim, denim esque texture. I'm just gonna get these so we can look at them side by side. So, and I think this, I think I'll actually use my handy dandy um, image viewer because we do have the image viewer, and let me just go in here and save this out. So, let me save some of these images and do 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 so I'm gonna put all these in a folder because I don't want to lose stuff so the first thing that you that I, I that I honestly do when I'm looking at creating a texture is I will go and do all of my reference so you know for that I go and I do all my reference um, design or my reference searches and I look for images of what I'm trying to create because I think that's one of the biggest things and people often don't do this they just jump in and they try to start creating a texture and the issue that I have with that is the fact that you need to do some type of research if you've done no research at all then you're kind of just flying blind and you're just kind of randomly putting things together and if that works for you then no what you know what let's just be honest that doesn't work for anybody uh, just having a bunch of randomness and floating around and, and doing whatever, that really doesn't work. Uh, you need to have some type of roadmap laid down of what you are, what you're trying to create. I mean, you need some kind of roadmap. So you really want to sit down and, and do some research on, you know, well, what do you want to, you know, what are you wanting to, uh, 
to actually be able to do. So, and I and I think that that's very that's very helpful to do when you're in that situation. So, I'm just using Image Overlay, and you've probably seen me use the Image Overlay app before. It's a great little app. Um, the things I like about it is what you're seeing right now. Like I can actually bring this up and have this on screen, and it's actually on top of the other programs. Now you can set this to click-through mode where you click through this image but this is really nice because I can just have this image to the side now as you can see here's the little applet for it so I can do click through when I do click through you'll see that I'm actually able to grab stuff underneath it as if this is not even here um, and then of course I can do edges which is kinda weird kinda useful though I guess you can turn yourself grayscale you can invert the uh, color you can flip the texture you can change the opacity of the whole window. You can change the rotational value of it if you choose to. Um, so you you know you can do a lot of you can do a lot of cool things with this. But you can change the scale of it, uh, whatever you're trying to do. So make sure we open this back up. Ooh. And oh, turn the opacity down. That's what happened. So. You know, I can see I've I've got I've grabbed this this uh, kind of image swatch from the internet. So this is nothing special. It's just a, a swatch that I grabbed from the internet. <clears throat> now, a lot of people you can actually use Substance Designer and be able to create um, substances based off of textures. So Substance Designer does let you bring in models. You can bring in actual 3D models and apply your texture or your shader rather because this is really, really you're building a shader more so than a texture. So you can build your shader and be able to apply it directly to your model if you choose to. And you have lighting so you do have to have a pretty decent um, GPU to run this. Now this machine right here that I'm running is actually running a really old GTX um, NVIDIA based card. Now this is something that I really don't love and I hope that <clears throat> maybe algorithmic some money from algorithmic camps gonna be listening and they kinda make a change but you know that's that's up to them. It's neither here nor there. I think they still make a fantastic product. But one of the things that I do I kind of don't like is that to get the full amount of use out of out of the display and out of the renderer you kind of want to use the iray renderer and the iray rendering method is an nvidia only method so if you have a if you have a um well, I won't say it's NVIDIA only. It, it runs better on NVIDIA. It's kind of like the NVIDIA game tools where you can get Hairworks to run on an AMD video card, but it's really super freaking slow. Um, so same thing with this. Like this is using the iRay technology, which is one of NVIDIA's rendering, uh, real-time renderers. Uh, so I kind of don't like the fact that I'm locked into that, that ecosystem. Um, but you can use OpenGL, and OpenGL works just as well, in my opinion. Um, and honestly, I'm more of an OpenGL user anyway because I'm primarily on uh, Linux when I'm actually working on real content creation. So I have no other API on Linux. Well, that's not true. I soon will have a choice API because I believe Vulkan is coming to the Linux platform because it will be it's the spiritual successor to OpenGL, um, so a lot more programs are going to start incorporating um, the Vulkan art, the Vulkan um, kind of API, and that's actually good for everybody because that API is an open API, meaning that no one has realistically any type of uh, boost by using it. So you can make the choice of what you want based off of price point, and not really I'm losing a feature because I've chosen this graphics card maker over the other graphics card maker. So anyway. I make sure I get my reference and if I look at this I can see that my reference it's pretty close to you know this type of texture with this grainy poppy kind of thing so let's look at what's in this graph so what I have in this graph is I've got a couple of different nodes in here and let's look at the nodes that I'm using currently for this 
I am using a weave node so my weave node in here if I double click on this you can see this is the weave pattern so that's the weave pattern that I'm using now what I did with this weave pattern is this weave pattern is sitting very high so the tiling on it is really really high and you gotta remember all this stuff is calculated on the fly as I'm using the shader so I can change the weave and you can see by changing that um, the tiling of the weave that I can see the bigger weave of it um, and I can also change this up to whenever I want to and you'll see this goes through and it recalculates so it took 28 milliseconds for this to calculate this generator for the weave out and then that goes into a blend and I'm blending that with the dirt if I click on my blend node I can see exactly what those two excuse me I can see exactly what those two look like blended together now the blend nodes are very interesting because the blend nodes work just like you would think it would it works like Photoshop so I have a blend node and then I have a type of blending mode so I can do like a linear dodge and blend these two together which is what I had it on I can do a subtract so I can make it subtract and that's what I'm left with for my pattern um, I could multiply these two together I could add sub these two and all of these things are going to have different results in the way your texture actually is made you know I can lighten them so I'm taking basically those two um, those two grayscale maps and bringing their pixels together by using some type of blending method uh, the same way I would do it inside of Photoshop so that's actually kinda cool and then I'm using I'm also using the weave again here so I've kinda broken this up into a couple of different things this right here is my color channel so this is everything that goes into my color channel and so there is color there are color nodes that are attached to this so you'll see that I do have it's a little bit larger so you'll see that I do actually have a uniform color and I'm using this HSL which is hue saturation and lightness and I'm blending that and getting color so we'll go through everything and how this stuff works I'm also generating a normal map out of this if I double click on this you'll see it's very faint but I do generate and I hate my middle mouse button with this sometimes my middle and it's just my middle mouse button um, if you're using a scroll wheel type of uh, of um, mouse you probably want to hold on the alt key like you would in Maya so that when you are moving you don't get this random jerkiness because the scroll wheel that I have sometimes when I'm moving I'm moving my mouse and I'm holding down the middle mouse button for some reason the, the, the viewport will jump and I found if you just hold down the alt key it doesn't happen so if you hold on the alt key and then middle mouse it doesn't happen um, but it can still happen sometimes so anyway I've got all these other textures so these are basically the same textures so basically and I get gosh so basically I've got these guys here and these are being used again so the same ones are being used up here now there's a little bit of a change when I use them up here right here you'll see I have a transform 2d node and this transform 2d node is really nice because you can basically um, double the amount of your of your um, of your tiling so if you have a if you, if you use the generator that doesn't necessarily have a tiling method you can always change that by changing the output that comes off of that so this is the original herb one texture and then this is what I generated by running it through the transform 2d node so it's basically it's just tiled it over and over and over again so the other thing that's really nice about substance designer is that all of these things are um, they're all tileable textures for the most part so many of these textures will tile over and over and over again and you don't have to worry about any tiling issues or things of that nature so I've got another blend so you can see this is made up of some pretty simple concepts I've got a bunch of blends and I've got all these things in there and that's really what makes up my entire shader so we're gonna remake this shader I'm gonna go through it step by step and we're gonna remake this shader um, and then we're going to and I'll show you how we do that in our next video